correct here. Hopefully it'll do it. Okay, we are, I believe we are live. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to go to Kayak Jack's Outfitters and check. I was, on this day, I, a few years ago, I was fishing for crappie. We had uh, 50, 50 something degrees today in January. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, I'm in, I'm in Florida, man. And, uh, it's a little warmer than that. <laughs> You're yep. down here, man. Yeah, I bet it so, is. I'm going to yeah. talk about that here in a minute. I think we're live and I don't see anybody on. I see yeah. a zero up oh, there's Somebody's on. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're yeah. live for sure. Yeah. If, oh yeah, I see. Nope. I don't see it yet. If you're on here, if we have anybody on here, if you could let us know if you can hear us okay, uh, that'd be great. Um, post a comment, and then uh, we'll go from there. Of course, this will be recorded so people can watch it later if they want, which sure. a lot of guys do. Go, go ahead and share it, man. I'll, uh, I'll share, it, share it. How do I share it? So where, where did you go live to? Uh, oh, hey, David Harry's on. David, can you hear us? Yeah, we're live. I see it. I see it. There's two comments there. I believe we are live. Okay. Sweet. All right. Michael yeah, Thomas. Can you hear us? Okay. We're good. All right. We'll cool. start. Getting Scott. Hey, Michael. Hi, Michael and David Harry. These guys are Nebraska guys. Um, nice. And uh, they said they can hear us loud and clear. Um. So that's good. Now, uh, of course, I could bring the. Uh... <laughs> Can you see that, Gray? What's that? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to get close to me this year. I just joined the band. <laughs> oh yeah, blasting that. Yeah. Hey, Sherman Bishop's Sup on. Yeah, man, Mister Mister Sherman. I, awesome. I was actually thinking about Sherman today, and I was I was like, I got to get a hold of him. I haven't seen him. Me and Sherman I talked heard. today, man. You were talking today. Me and Sherman did. Yeah, we we talked today. Yep. Oh, good, man. Yep. I I can't thank him good enough. Good conversation. For what he did. What's that? Good. We had a good conversation. Oh, good okay. conversation good. today. Uh, I can't thank him enough for what he did for me. There, down here in Florida. So anyway, we got a few oh, yeah. people on. So, um, guys, here's we're gonna we're gonna have a little show here tonight to start off the year, and uh, this is gonna be we're gonna be doing this weekly from here on out. We're gonna have some reports from the Midwest, um, bring guys on like Greg, and uh, this is Greg Nosar. As you can see his name there, and we're on conversations with Kayak Jack, and uh, so we're here to promote kayak fishing, of course, and then kind of kind of. Uh, See what's going on out there. So anyway, um, Greg, I just want to say how I met you was through the KBBT, Kayak Bass Bracket Tour. I did not know who you were. I just saw you yeah, on there talking. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I want to say that I had a great time. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, but uh, some of you guys that are on here, if you have questions, um, please let us know. And uh, we'll we'll talk about it as we go. James Leggett's on here. Uh, he's uh, one of the founders of the Central States Kayak Series. So anyway, if you guys have questions, let us know. So I finished the school day. Uh, by the way, a personal matter here. We're out of school for two days. The uh, virus has hit us hard, so they're shutting us down for a couple of days to let the they're going to spray down the school and get rid of the germs, I guess. And we'll see if we can start again on Monday. So, um, no, I'm not probably, I don't know if I'm going to fish or not, Greg, but I'm, I'm going to probably get some rest. <laughs> so anyway, Greg, if you could tell us a little bit about you, uh, that'd be good. Yeah. Well, I'm Greg Nosar from, um, Stafford, Virginia. I've been fishing for a long time. I mean, all my life. <clears throat> I started out really with the saltwater, uh, you know, kayak started kayak fishing, I don't know, almost over 10 years ago, really. Um, just kind of messing around. I'm more of a old school, you know, style bank beater, you know, river wader fishing. Um, you know, again, saltwater has really my, been my passion, but, you know, really love bass, bass tournament fishing. So, you know, um, I just, I'm just a grunt. I just love the outdoors, always love the outdoors. Um, 
you know, just kind of old, old school guy, you know, which, I mean, I don't know what to say, but I just love fishing. I just love being out on the, on the outdoors. I'm a golfer, um, played tons of golf in my life. And, uh, man, I love traveling. Uh, my, my family's everything to me as well. I got two, two daughters, uh, two teenage daughters. One just graduated high school and the other one is a uh, freshman in high school. And, uh, my wife and kids are at home. I'm down here in Florida right now, getting ready to fish the Kissimmee event. And uh, just have just living my life, man. Um, I'm a professional. I'm um, a banking professional. Mortgage. Uh, I'm in mortgages here, so I can pretty much work for every anywhere I want. I've got an amazing assistant that helps me out and lets me do my thing. So, you know, I don't fish 24 seven. I don't fish all all the time. I do work, believe it or not. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love I love what I do. I, I really do, and um, I live life to the fullest, man. I try to, you know, and uh, love meeting people and. Just having a good time, you know, and met some amazing, amazing people here in the last couple of years, being able to, you know, travel. COVID has done two things, man. COVID's, you know, obviously there's bad parts of COVID and, and all that stuff, but man, it's really liberated a lot of people. And, you know, the people who've lived that cubicle life, you know, can go out there and businesses have found out that, you know, people can do their work from other locations and not being tied to an office um my job's one of them and i took advantage of that opportunity and had a chance to, to travel uh quite a bit the last two years and uh wouldn't trade it in for nothing you know it's been amazing so living out of a camper basically you know and just having a blast man so um but just just love what i do just just yeah. trying to love life man you know and and that's great stuff man and and so greg i always wanted to meet you, you know after we did the kbt and stuff and so I'm down. I think we were down at, uh, was it Caddo? It was Caddo. Yeah. Caddo Lake. And so, uh, Richie McMichael and I pull up to this ramp and it's like in the backwaters of, of oh, it wasn't a ramp. It was, uh, yeah, it, it was, was like swamp. Yeah. It <laughs> I, mean, was, it was, I mean, pure yeah. swamp. Yeah. And, uh, I, I said, Hey, Richie, that's gotta be Greg Nosar over there. And so yeah. kind of met you by surprise. Yep. Yep. There. That's right. It was a pleasant surprise, man, because I was, yeah. I think it was by myself, wasn't it? I think it was a bunch of us showed up, happened to show up there. Yeah. And then we all just took off together. That's right. Yeah. And uh, we had a great day fishing out there and fun. So um, I think we kind of ended up fishing that area in the tournament as well, you know, out that way. Um, But you guys all had motors and I was like pedaling like mad to keep up. And then my, my uh, drive went bad on me. So that was, that was a good time though. So I'm glad I got to meet you because sometimes a lot of us have met online as kayak fishermen. You know, there there were there were you know Chad Hoover kind of like he's he's one of the icons in the sport. I I met him on the phone when he was in the Navy before this all even began, and I hadn't even met him for years. And then I finally met him, you know, through the KBF National. But right. uh, there's so many guys like that that I had visited, and I and there's still some I haven't met yet, but I hope to someday. You know, but it's nice when we all get together. It is, man. I mean, you know, it seems like you know. Well, honestly, we met each other in person, but it seems like when you know each other for many years, you know, I mean, it's just that kind of, yeah. you get kind of, you know, friendship that we had, you know, um, yeah. even though it was online, it was, it was like, Hey man, <laughs> you know, what's yeah. up? We had yeah. had some, I, I still have that awesome pic that you took of us all launching together out of Canada oh, yeah. and just a That's beautiful cool, huh? place, man. That was a great pic, yeah. man. It was awesome. So yeah, I will tell you though, Greg, when I go out kayak fishing, it's not only the fishing, but I'm always looking for that photo opportunity, you know? That, yep. That can show yep. people what it's like out there, and it doesn't. the 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 photo doesn't even give it justice. No, it what doesn't. It looks like. Yeah, it's, it's epic. You're, it's just. Epic. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. It was awesome, man. It was. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was that not the best tournament for me, but who cares, man? You know, got the. Yeah. It's the experience in itself. It was a great. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So how did how did you get into kayak fishing? What what what, you know what what made you get into the plastic boat? Well, like I said, man, um, you know, saltwater fishing is, is, is what I love to do. And I just saw something on, um, on YouTube is kind of scrolling around because, you know, you're looking for different things, how to improve your fishing. And uh, I kept on seeing, you know, this guy in the Hobie and I saw this video of this guy catching a 500 pound Marlin and it was dragging him out 30 miles out to sea in a kayak. Wow. It, wasn't, <laughs> was like, it wasn't Jim Salmon's, was it? No, it wasn't okay. Jim Salmon's. It was, uh, I think it was, um, uh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, it was, it was out of Panama. Yeah. And uh, I think it was Robert Fields, actually, to be honest okay. with you. A long time ago, uh, down in Panama. But uh, it was one of his guys. 
but he, you know, he, I was looking at this. I was like, man, that looks freaking awesome. And then I started looking at the deep water blue adventures out of um, South, South Florida. And then there's a guy who's actually now a friend of mine. His name is Elias uh, V fishing. And then um, there's a guy in New Jersey called sea money fishing. And these guys are out there, you know, in their Hobies and they're fishing and they're catching big stripers and they're catching, you know, these monster fish, these red fish and everything else. And these drum. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I got to do this, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I live I live about 10 minutes to 15 minutes from the Potomac River. And, um, man, I know how what great fishery that is. And I was like, I just got to go do it, man. I got to go get a kayak and, and just try it. So, mm -hmm. you know, got got a kayak and um, man, it's changed my life, dude. I mean, it's. Like you said, it's not just the fishing. It's, I mean, like everything changes. It's, it's just go out in the water, experiencing nature, see things that you'll never be able to see while you're bank beaten. Go out and, and explore different. I, I'm, I love exploring new water. I, I love mm -hmm. going out there exploring new things. And the kayak has really kind of opened up a lot of different, you know, avenues mm -hmm. for my life. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm a, obsessed with it. You know, the fact that you could go out and pinpoint different areas and, not be afraid to go out there and just and just see new things so yeah it's just becoming an adventurer you know um that, that's what i do i mean i just like to go out and enjoy outdoors in, in any which way i can so yeah kind of extreme stuff too man i like to go out there and just mess around big time so mm -hmm. yeah cool so yeah so i remember I, i've been out with jim salmons by the way in the ocean yeah the godfather and, really the godfather yeah, yeah and, and, and yeah. i uh when i first started i I messaged, you know, I don't know how, whatever we did on the internet back then. I got a hold of him and I said, Hey, I, I got a 20 year reunion at, uh, for, by the way, that was a long time ago too. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, a 20 year reunion, uh, in California at one of my high schools I went to. And, and I said, will you take me fishing when I'm out there? So he guided me. So we, we get out past the waves and he goes, Hey man, check your, check out to your right. And I have these porpoises right next to me. He goes, Oh, they're just checking you out. And he goes, Hey, look down, look down a huge manta ray the size of a giant truck comes underneath. Oh my me, God. You know, and then mm -hmm. we're going out there and you, and it's 140 foot deep where we're at. We're next to those 1500 foot canyons off La Jolla. And we're going to go for thresher shark and we're catching bait and we're catching bait. That's like, you know, I mean, I can't really say it out here, show it out here, but you know, yeah. 12 inch, uh, sure. Mackerel and stuff. And, right. And, uh, it was, and with those little rigs, the geeky rig, whatever you call it. And, and uh, we go out there and and I get hit and it's monstrous, whatever it is. And all I get back is the head of the fish and it just <laughs> chopped it right off. But I did get a barracuda that day. We were in eight foot swells. So Oof. the adventure, and we're in a paddle kayak, mind you. Oh my gosh. We paddled out there about three miles. Wow. And we're paddling in the ocean. And uh, you could see eight down. Footers. Yeah. And you could see the fish darting. But yeah. that's what makes the sport so exciting is there's it, the what you can do is limitless with it. Oh, no doubt, man. I mean, my first year as a kayak um, fisherman, really, I, I, I wish to go to this thing and I wish they had it again, man. It's called the Oak Island Classic. It's out in North Carolina, Oak Island, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a slam. So you do an offshore slam and an inshore slam. Uh -huh. And again, I was fishing out there with Elias and. Man, we, we were out there about three, four miles on this reef, and, you know, we, we were in our pedal kayaks, and all of a sudden, we get circled with Jack, uh, um, those um, uh, hammerhead sharks, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, I saw this hammerhead kind of thrashing around, and he was chasing bait and everything else, and next thing you know, they turn, and they're basically trying to attack our kayaks, uh, this one big hammerhead. It's, this is on video. You look at Elias V fishing hammerhead shark attack. You just got to wow. see this thing. It was out there with them, and... I mean, they were basically the rudders. They were like trying to eat the rudders uh, uh, of our kayaks and stuff. But you talk about intense, man. I mean, like, wow. and then during that tournament too, there's another guy. Um, he we're out there trying to king mackerel fish, and he he hooks into a freaking like black tip shark, and the shark goes right underneath my kayak, and like comes up. I mean, just I mean, all over the place, man. It's Jeez. it's a it's a it's an adventure. It's a it's scary, but man, I look back at it, I'm like. Dude, that I would never change a thing, man. That was freaking awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people said, you're freaking crazy. You know, you're yeah. out there with the gators. You're out there with the sharks and snakes and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. And you're stuck in the office with, you know, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah, Karen's more dangerous than any of the sharks out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, it is. So let's go back a couple years. So COVID hits. 
Um, yep. Things shut down. In fact, I fly to Maryland where you're from and where you live, basically your home, right? Maryland. Yep. And, uh, Virginia. Uh, I'm Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Virginia yep. where I was born. I was born there. Yep. And uh, a lot of good people born in Virginia. All right. Thanks. That's good. Including, so, you know, most of our presidents. There, yeah. I was, I'm not going to be a president. <laughs> But You're president like, of Nebraska, man. That's yeah, right here. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, so we finished the state basketball tournament. Our guys win it. Um, they're shutting things down. My dad gets killed in a car wreck. I have to fly to Maryland. Things are shutting down. Yeah. Um, we go there. The airports are emptying. There's really not a mask thing yet or anything. I, I mean, we don't even know what's going on. Everything's just shutting down. We were yeah. the only basketball tournament going on in the country. Mm. everything had shut down so the espn had us on there you know and stuff and then we come back and I, i'm told uh you're quarantined for 14 days you went out of the state so i couldn't go to work well then they shut down the school all of, and then all of a sudden they're saying hey there may not be fishing tournaments this year i'm like what are you kidding me it's outside yeah and so we you know they're saying we're not going to be able to use the ramps that it's going to be it's done and all here and then i get on the internet i'm looking around and the KVBT appears. Yep. So tell us about that. How did how did this happen? Well, like you said, man, I mean, COVID hit. And look, like I said, I just can't sit around, man. I mean, it, it just yeah. didn't make any sense. You know, I understand that, you know, we couldn't be together. Like, I remember when COVID first hit, and I was down at um, North Carolina. I was at the uh, Lake Norman event mm -hmm. um, and with Hobie. And, you know, here I am in a room with 100 guys. And you're thinking, should I be here? I mean, this is kind of sketchy, you know. I mean, should I, you know, be around? You know, because we didn't know what COVID was at that time, man. I mean, it's right. just one of those things. Right. And I remember, like, kind of feeling a little uneasy about it. But at the same time, I was like, look, man, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Let's just go ahead and you know fish this thing out. And um, shortly thereafter, after that tournament, man, it was like everybody was shutting down, like you said, KBF and everybody else. I want to fish, and logically, science, you know. I understand social distancing, but I'm not going to hold myself into a house or anything like that. I want to go out there, you know, the fish. I mean, touching a fish, am I going to get COVID? You know what I mean? What's the deal? And um, I, I just wanted to go out and, and kind of get ourselves away from this whole COVID crap and, and be able to compete. I mean, I'm a competitor by nature, and so are you. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it would be cool. It was on, on the heels of March Madness at that time, right, when everything really started hitting, hitting the fan. And I'm a big sports fan. I'm like, well, why don't we can't have like a March Madness style tournament nationwide and get these guys all in a bracket and bracket them up and individually fish their own waters and make it online. And let's just see what happens, you know, and I can kind of crowdsource that. I mean, I put that on various different uh, pages and stuff and they were like, put it together, see what happens, you know. And so sure enough, man, we, we put that thing together, man. And it took off like nobody's business, man, because everybody had the same mentality. Like yeah. this doesn't make sense. Why can't we yeah. do an acti you know, activity outside, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and fish? So thus the KBBT was born. And then we took it to another level by broadcasting the events and, um, you know, then having championships and regionals and all sorts of stuff, man. And, you know, it's still going on. I mean, we're getting ready to get started back here in February. Mm -hmm. But it, it facilitated a need at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but it also – it it all opened the door to a lot more other things. I mean, it really created, created an amazing community and, and, and a lot. And I got a chance to meet some amazing people that had to share the same passion, passion as I do. Mm -hmm. And we're still good friends, you know, yeah. throughout, throughout that. And also what it did is it got people into the sport who really didn't know how to, you know, tournament mm -hmm. fish, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they didn't even know how to measure a fish, you know, or they didn't know what a, a ho you know, a, a catch board was or anything like that. So it taught a lot of people to be in a tournament situation, but not in a live event, you know what I mean? And so people use this platform to kind of get into tournament fishing, you know? And to be honest with you, man, 1v1 fishing and, you know, it's mano a mano. And I, t I tell you what, man, it's, uh, it's it's i mean the adrenaline starts man it's oh yeah it, it's a lot of fun when it comes right down to it man and and the clock's ticking and you got you got to get a couple more inches on the board man i mean it's uh it's intense it's intense and 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 the cool thing was like sherman bishop's on here he, he was on here earlier i think he's still on here sherman 
And by the way, uh, Sean Dwyer says Jim's the man, and Stephen Bell's on here, and Ryan Havlicek. Yeah. So guys are getting on here. It's good. We're going to tell some great stories, guys. Hang hang with us. So, like, for me in Nebraska, how am I going to compete against a guy in Florida or Texas? You know, I, th- I was thinking that. And yet, yep. here I get matched up with a guy like Sherman Bishop, but a storm hits down there. <laughs> so yeah, you never know. I have a chance. <laughs> Yeah. And so I won. I won that. Yeah. Recently, we just had Matthew Conant take on Derek Miller. You know, Um, this was, you know, the last uh, championship bracket or last uh, qualifying bracket. Yeah. I mean, Texas versus Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, weather conditions, all these different things. I mean, Matt Conant beat Derek Miller and Derek Miller is a hammer out of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just never know, you know. And uh, sure enough, I mean, that brought Matt to the championship. He took on uh, David Brook, which was out of Missouri, taking on the Triple Crown winner, uh, Matt Conant. And then David Brook winds up winning out of Missouri in Pete's Massachusetts. So you just never know, man. It it happens. And the other thing is, you know, like in April that year when that happened, there was one day I put up 104 inches just right here by Auburn on on a public waters. Not very big. Yeah. 104 inches. And I'm thinking, this is going to be a great spring. And it was. I had a great year that year. But the same thing, so by the same token, you find out that places like Massachusetts and New York and and, uh, and any Ohio, all these states have big fish, and these guys know where to get them. And, and public you water. You never know, man. You never know. know this before. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's what KBBT did. It kind of yeah. opened a yeah. lot of people's eyes to the, yeah. the regions. Like, yeah. we have a guy named Tim Spry in Maine. Dude, yeah. Maine, and he was yeah. catching hundred inch bags. Yeah, on on China Lake in Maine. Yeah. I mean, you're going, what in the world? Yeah, and he's and beating guys out of Texas. It's and these guys aren't just like going out and fish. They know how to fish. No, I mean, they know they, how to fish. They just they just know how to get them, and and you learn so much from them because when the what I liked is when you had the broadcast, you could learn from those guys and what they were doing. And the other yeah. thing is in the live broadcast, you can learn from guys and and so we all became sponges for that and i think it really did elevate the competition whether it's online or live it elevated the competition all across the country yeah it did and also it it prepared you for if you were to travel like you know tournament let me say this tournament fishing tournament bass fishing is a very very small minute number Mm -hmm. of fishermen that actually fish okay mm-hmm. so yeah. we, we we concentrate on the tournament fishermen because that's mm-hmm. kind of like our niche or whatever mm-hmm. but th- we are nothing compared to the overall industry right yeah yeah i mean we're just not i mean w- like when we went down to tennessee i was just blown away about people who don't care about bass fishing they just mm-hmm. care about brim and crappie fishing mm-hmm. and that's a whole community in itself and it's three yeah. times the size of bass fishing Mm-hmm. And then you have the saltwater fishermen and all, you know, cat fishermen and, and all yeah. these different things, you know, we kind of like worry about our own little world, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of, of, of tournament bass fishing. But what I, what I was getting at was the expansion of um, how people can learn different techniques and kind of cross pollinate those techniques in all their style fishing that they want to do. And they're learning it. I mean, they're learning it from guys in, in Iowa and, and Nebraska and everything else. And, and, you know, they're taking that kind of knowledge that they've seen and, and heard and they're bringing it into real life tournament fishing situations. And it's really cool. It's, it was educational. I learned so much the last two, three, two, three years, man, from people like you and, and all these other people. Like I've never thrown a Nico rig in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then I started thinking, man, he was killing on that Nico rig, man. I'm going to see what he can do in grass. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it yeah. definitely, it definitely helps. Yeah. You know, and so we've, we've talked about, and we're going to get, we're going to talk about what, what that success has done for you in just a moment here, but I want to go on to another realm of kayak fishing. We've talked about how you can fish online, you can fish in a live tournament, but now the KFL. Yeah, man. As a team. You yeah. have like the NFL of kayak fishing. Yeah, so tell it's, us about that. What's what's it, what's going on there? It's exciting, man. I mean, we we started this last year, and what made us think about that was, um, it it was just one of those things. Was kind of sitting there going, man, kind of reminiscing, you know, just kind of like, man, I missed the days of playing baseball, miss my teammates, 
you know, playing, you know, and, and traveling and all this different things. And I, I was like, man, I wonder if you can bring that into kayak fishing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Putting a jersey on them with a name and number and, you know, teaming these guys up and, you know, see what happens. And so that kind of, you know, born the idea of the KFL started kind of, again, crowdsourcing, making sure I'm not going crazy. Mm-hmm. And it was a pretty positive, you know, uh, response to that that idea. And um, it, it just blew up. And it's not just me. It was several other people like Sam Jones and Daniel Perry and, mm-hmm. you know, all these other guys that kind of got behind it. You know, Robert Brown and, you know, that really helped drive the KFL to what it is today, man. And, you know, the, we, we I went up starting with 17 teams last year. Um, wow. I mean, it it's a hit, man. I mean, it really is. And it, it I've heard nothing but the guys who fish – constantly these tournaments and stuff like that they said this is the funnest and, and me personally too i will say this is the funnest mm-hmm. style fishing that they've ever had i mean you know getting together with four or five guys or eight guys and going out there as a team going to somebody else's house and trying to beat them or them coming to you and trying to defend your home mm-hmm. it brings you back to when you were a kid or if you were an athlete or whatever it gives you that kind of mm-hmm. that kind of team feeling Mm-hmm. And that camaraderie that's unbreakable. Like I'm down here in Florida, Marty, mm-hmm. and the guys that were in the tour or the, the, the tournament series was called KAF Kayak Anglers of Florida. They have a pride about them, about what team they're, they're on, the mm-hmm. Swamp Donkeys versus the Florida Copperheads and then the Southern Slayers and, and all these different things. And, you know, they're, they're not just part of fishing, you know, as an individual. They want to be part of that team, and and there's this healthy, fun rivalry that's that's taking place here, yep. and uh, man, it's just so cool how how this thing is taking off, man, and it's something special, man. It really is, and I think this year coming up, it's gonna be it's gonna be very very fun, man. It's gonna be nice. really really cool. Well, we're looking forward to hearing about, it. and they can go to there's a Facebook page for each of those, right? Yeah, I mean every team. So there's KBBT, uh, Kayak Bass Bracket Tour, and yeah. then the Kayak Fishing League, which is the KFL. So they can go to uh, the Facebook pages there. Yeah. We also have Motion Sports Network. That's what this is. Motion yeah, yeah, Sports we're gonna Network. Talk about that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and that and that's broadcasting both events. Um, okay. Okay. You know, we we do talk about general sports uh, uh, as well. I mean, we were kind of like you know sports network. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be the home for the KFL as well as KBBT and, you know, trying to broadcast content and get it out. So, yeah, I mean, go to Motion Sports Network, like and subscribe on YouTube and all that stuff. You'll be able to watch all that stuff. It's really cool. And we're on Roku and Amazon uh, Fire and all sorts of good stuff, man. It's good. Cool. It's fun. Okay, great stuff. Now, if you want to be – there's another KBBT bracket coming out before your next national championship, right? Yeah, there's going to be – there's actually going to be a couple of them. We still have okay. to fit – um we still have to uh, finish some um, qualifying events. So I think there's going to be two and there's going to be a last minute qualifier event. So there's actually going to be three and that turn, the national championship was going to be in April. Mm -hmm. Um, So the first Southern bracket is going to start here in February. And then shortly thereafter, we're going to do a Northern bracket and then we're going to do a nationwide bracket, a last minute qualifier. And then um, we're going to do the, the national championship. Now I will say this, I haven't announced this to KBBT yet. I'll announce it here though. The the national championship, we were able to go out live um, after everybody competed against their own home waters. We we got eight guys together at a house, and we, we did it at a, at, a, at a regional. That we're not going to do that this year. We're going to keep it all online, and it's we're, we're going to lower the entry fee down, keep it all online. If you want to travel and compete, you're more than welcome to. But we're going to keep this all online, and and the okay. reason why we're going to do that is because the um. The other series are so jam packed in in the springtime. Yeah, the bat, you know, the bass, the uh, KBF, the Hobies. Mm-hmm. There's tournaments every weekend. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we didn't yeah. want to like disrupt that for guys that wanted to mm-hmm. go out and fish that they could still mm-hmm. fish those events as well as being part of the championship. So mm-hmm. that's why we're doing that this year. We're going to keep it strictly oh. online. I want to take a break here for a second. We've got uh, Michael Carnes, great stuff. Marty and Greg, Sean Dwyer, uh, Massachusetts water will surprise anybody. Um, Scott, yeah, Sean, Sean's one of the owners of the Palmetto Punishers out in uh, South Carolina now. Yeah, so. he mentioned this later too, the Palmetto Punishers. And then there's Scott, I don't know how to pronounce it, Sheshowitz. Sheshowitz. Yeah, Scott, he's out of uh, Massachusetts. He said, he said, yes, Maine, I was just going to say that. And then Sean Dwyer said he had 90 in Maine for EKF and only took 10th. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yep. uh, 
You know, do you know James Strawbridge out of Colorado? Yeah, he's out of Colorado. Yep. Yeah, he's yep. he's a he's a great leader out there. He's on. Says, hey guys, what's up? So thanks for being on here, you guys. We got a few more things to talk about. So um, we talked about the KBBT, how you got into everything, the KFL. Um, now the juice, the juicy stuff. <laughs> Greg Nosar is now a champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so tell us about the tournament you were in, what it was like and where you were. Can you do that for us? Yeah, man. So, um, again, I'm, camp- I'm down here in Florida. I'm going to be fishing the Kissimmee event here coming up the, um, the latter half of the month, the Tenvitational and all that stuff. So, um, happened to, so, I mean, I saw an event, it was called kayak anglers of Florida event. It was on Felsmere. I just kind of just browsed through it and I was like, Oh man, I'm like, I love Felsmere, you know, I've only, I've been on it maybe th- four or five times, mm-hmm. but, um, I was like, that'd be kind of fun to, you know, kind of h- hang out with the guys and some of the guys that I know they're on the Florida copperheads and swamp donkeys and stuff like that. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'll sign up. Sure. You know, why not? And, uh, so I signed up for it and had Randy Newton on our show mm-hmm. talked about, you know, the, the kayak anglers of Florida. He does a great job by the way. I mean, he's one of, he's a great tournament director, uh down here in florida and um yeah so i was like hey man i asked him on the show i'm like how crazy would it be a guy from virginia comes down to florida and whips all your florida oh. <laughs> you know what i mean how embarrassing would it be with <laughs> that you have to t- turn over the trophy to to me you know and we're just kind of joking around and yeah, laughing yeah, about yeah. it and all that stuff oh, yeah. Yeah. and uh you know and i was like well i mean i was like i'm gonna go after it man i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and so my boy blake Blake Knight was with, you know, we were talking about it and kind of game planning. I was like, look, man, um, there's a couple places I think are, are going to be really, really good. And um, you know, we're kind of like, you know, what talk about, hey, I'm going to throw this, I'm going to do this, and then kind of work, work these different baits in different areas. And I think I, I, have a, I have a game plan. And so I've pre-fished on Wednesday and um, didn't really have a great pre-fishing, man. I mean, to be honest with you, I was kind of disappointed. I think it wound up being like 87 inches. But I met Conrad Benetti out there, and he had 88. So I was like, hey, man, if I can hang with Conrad Benetti on, on Felsmere, you know, that's fine, man. I mean, it's just that kind of day. And then Matt Kasparic, who's another KBT guy, goes out there the next day and puts up like 104 inches or 106 Jeez. inches. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get just destroyed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I'm just not in the right area whatever. And so – um you know, got out there the first morning, you know, and the first thing in the morning and, you know, I, there's just one spot that I knew held, held fish. So I just want to c- catch a quick limit and lo and behold, when I'm catching a, a pretty good, nice limit, uh, I had a kicker of 21 and a half. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just caught them different ways, man. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll tell you what I did, man. I mean, I put a video out there. Everybody can see it. It's on YouTube on motion sports, but when you fish, man, Anywhere you go, you're going to work three different areas of the water column. You're going to fish the top, you're going to fish the middle, and you're going to fish the bottom, right? And Florida fishing is very shallow fishing. It's a grass, it's a grass oriented uh, structure. Um, there's, it's really big, a big sand pit, man. I mean, it's what it is. There's not a lot of points. There's not a lot of, you know, things that you would see in traditional highland reservoirs and stuff like that. So, what you'll do, uh, what I what I wanted to do, man, is commit to the top water fishing bite because that was my biggest bite. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that was going to be, um, if it wasn't going to happen early, it wasn't going to happen at all because we had 10 to 15, 20 mile an hour winds coming in during the day. So I found this area in the very beginning of the day to where uh, it was it was a chatterbait bite early. And then, um, you know, I was catching, you know, 17s, 15s, 13 stuff like that just to f- fill the bag up but then i kind of knew the time that this was taking place right right now in florida there's a spawn cycle going on right there's a you know, fish are coming in and out and spawning and i was actually talking to sherman about this i said man do you think that these fish are spawning right now i mean do you think they're post spawn pre-spawn whatever and he told me he's like man they're they're everywhere i mean they're they're i mean they're just roll, rolling in cycles so I found areas that I thought could hold pre-spawning bass. I'm a pre-spawn bass guy. And they were staging to get to the spawning grounds. And so I started flipping a, a ferry wand with a wacky rig Cinco into these areas that I thought were pre-spawn areas. And sure enough, I mean, because, I mean, the, the chatterbait bite was slowing down. The topwater mm-hmm. bite wasn't there. 
So I just had to just try to go finesse fishing. That's how I wound up catching my 21 and a half, mm -hmm. which just flipping a, a Senko into, into these reeds. So got that, felt confident. But then I knew that I couldn't stay there because I had to go find tournament winning fish. You say, well, oh my God, you caught a 21 and a half. Why would you leave there? Because I knew my bigger bite was south. And I knew all the bigger guys um, who were catching the bigger fish were, were going to go down south and they were going to tear them up. So I want to be a part of that. Well, I got down there already. It took three, it's three and a half mile pedal wow. in grass down this canal in now 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Oh, man. So, and out of the east. So you're getting blown sideways, oh. you know, going north and south. So I get down there, man. And, um, you know, I'm throwing, you know, I'm trying to throw a spook, trying to walk a spook across the water. It just wouldn't hold. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I got some of these fools, man. I can, I can freaking fish top water. So I start, start throwing a big clacker black spin, um, uh, buzz bait right. around. Yeah. 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 And that wasn't doing nothing, but, but skip it across the waves, man. So, uh, it just wasn't, it just wasn't going to happen. So I started throwing a chatter bait down there and I was catching, I must've caught 12 dinks in a row, man. I, I mean, it was just like, mm -hmm. okay. So I, it's just like 10 o'clock. Do I make a decision to move? Or do I stay down here and just suffer? You know what I mean? And I have to tell you, Eric Pullens had a quote. He wrote me this text the night before, and it says, don't be a bitch, win this effing thing. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Hey, that's great. We're a PG show here, so that's good. That's okay. so, so, so what it said. And I kept on thinking in my head, I'm getting my butt kicked out in the waves. And I could hear Eric Plans just going, don't be a bitch, man. Just go out there and freaking, you know, win this thing, you know. And I'm like, man, this is this is going to suck, man. I don't want to stay here. So anyway, I was like, man, there's no way. So I made a decision, conscious decision. Then I need to get out of this crap because I knew the top water bite that I had uh, in practice wasn't going to hold. I yeah. need to go back up to where I started. So I went up back where I started. Wow. And and then at that point, man, I went, I caught – I caught maybe another 14 or 15 and I was like, man, these fish are just not here. So it's time to move. It's time to, you know, it's time to go. And so I started scouting around trying to find these areas that were going to kind of be out of the wind and um, hopefully just find this, find an area that was going to hold fish. Well, I found this area, Marty, it was, you had to pick up your drive, pick up your, you know, your paddle and you had to paddle through this nasty, gnarly um, hydrilla, fly uh, grass in the wind 20 25 mile an hour right now Jeez. and you're just struggling trying to get across the water i saw one guy literally pick up his pdl <laughs> propellers and he fl like floated back to where he came from and he's just, like so frustrated so i just tried to keep momentum finally found this area that opened up and it looked exactly like the potomac river man and it, it looked wow. like this flat i fish on the potomac river and I started looking around and all these guys are like bank beat and all that stuff. I'm like, I know they're not going to be on the banks right now mm -hmm. because of the wind. And they're just going to congregate in, in kind of like in, in, the, in, in deeper water in the flats. Mm -hmm. So I just started chucking and winding. And sure enough, man, boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's just crazy. It was nuts. It was like a flurry at three upgrades in a row. And then I went to like from 10th to 3rd. And then I was on the phone with Eric Polenz and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm trying here, man. He goes, oh, you can do this. And then he's yelling at me and I'm, I threw out there and I catch like a 19 and a quarter. And I'm like, Eric, shut up. man. I got a 19 and a quarter. <laughs> you wow. know, it's all grab it thing. And he, we were like, yeah, man, let's do this, you know? And, um, uh, anyway, put it on the board and I went up, uh, that went up getting me to first place. And I went up, uh, upgrading another inch from there. And uh, anyway, then Russ Kennedy winds up catching, um, uh, freaking 21 and a quarter and he takes the lead okay yeah. so he's like at 98 and i'm at 95 and i'm like oh wow. my god i'm like what is it gonna take to win this freaking thing yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and so you know i'm like okay fine so i'm trying to find a 20 it doesn't it doesn't happen and i'm like all right so i'll take second no big deal you know what i mean hey I, I did everything i could i i you know I, I i tried everything i got and i'm getting these messages marty and it's like man, you need to look at Russ's fish. You need to, I'm like, I can't look at anything right now. I mean, I'm just kind of like concentrating on fishing and come to find out, you know, Russ had a, um, uh, obstructed, uh, ID, you know, that DQ'd one of his fish. So, I mean, I hate it for Russ. I really do, man. Yeah, um, yeah. but it, it's just, it is what it is. And it's so part anyway, yeah. it's part, yeah. it's part of the game, man. I mean, yeah. it sucks, but yeah. Russ, I'll say this, Russ handle it. 
like a like a true professional and yeah. he went up going to the to the tournament uh director and said hey man go ahead and dq my fish and it's an obstructed id yeah. so anyway i wound up taking the win based on you know based on uh, that but yeah i mean it but it's still man it was it was yeah. it was an, it was so cool man uh to yeah. come down here right. and do that that's cool that's a great story that's great and and uh scott i hope i say this right i'm Sheshowitz. how you yeah. say it Sheshowitz. Sheshowitz. Yep. He posted a link to your video on the comments. So if people want to see that video, it's there. And then Sean yep. Dwyer mentioned that Greg Nozar is the king of Florida. <laughs> yeah, they called me the sheriff, the governor, whatever. Sure. I mean, come yeah, down. I like that badge thing. That was good. And then Jeremy yeah. Brandis out of Iowa is on Team Iowa. Uh, I, love, so, I love Jeremy, man. Yeah. Love me some yeah. Jeremy Brandis. Yeah, so we got a lot of guys on here from different parts of the country. Yeah. So, um, so what, what's kind of your goal for this year, your biggest goal? For, for this year well honestly man i mean I, I don't know marty i'm going to be able to fish a lot of these national events man um i, I took a lot i took a look at the schedules man and it just doesn't fit yeah uh, a lot of what we do mm -hmm. and um you know it's like you guys are in the midwest mm -hmm. and a lot of the tours are are focusing a lot of their efforts on the midwest not only you have bass you have hobie you have KBF, but you also have the All-American, which are great run, you know, tours. There's not so much that kind of opportunity on this year on the East Coast like we thought we were going to have um, from the national level. And so, you know, it's going to be kind of hard chasing AOIs for everybody when the tours are so spread out, especially yeah. across, I mean, you know, yeah. the Midwest and now really yeah. the West. So to be honest with you, man, I'm gonna fish whatever I can. I'm gonna support everybody who I can, and you know, I, I you know, I just love, I love tournament fishing. But man, my there's two main goals for me, man: KBBT and KFL. And you know, we want to focus our attention on that and and, and do what we can, man. Sure, um, sure. You know, and and, and, and yeah. quite frankly, man, um, my goal and objective is to to introduce people to the sport, you know, um, and like you, like you. Um, we want to tell people how great this sport is mm -hmm. and kind of carry the torch for the sport and, and let people just have, man, just take this thing and, and have a bunch of fun with it, man. I just yeah. want to have fun this year, Absolutely. man. That's, that's it. You know, take everything out of it. I don't care about, you know, everything else. I want people yeah. just to have an absolute blast, kind of get back to mm -hmm. and just enjoying it, man. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. That's, I see the same thing. In fact, um, you know, I'm going to fish the All American, of course, but, um, I'm probably not going to make a lot of the big events because of my job. And I, I and I'm, I'll, as you know, I'll be, everybody knows I'll be done in June this year, but, um, yep. at the same time, no, um, I want to, I want to mention this though, Greg, and you know, this too, that, you know, anybody can do this at any level. It doesn't mean that you have to fish a national event. We have things from the local league, you know, in yep. your area, like, like six, 10 guys will show up and you fish, you pay, sometimes you pay 10 bucks to get in and, it's winner take all that night, whatever it is. Sometimes it's not even that. It's just you just fish, have a little friend of competition. And yep. then the, ne the next level up is maybe a local tournament on a Saturday. Yep. Um, and then the next level up is a regional type tournament, like an All-American type one. And then you have a national series like Hobie or Bass or KBF. You know, so you can fish at any level you want. And that's what's fun about it. And you you can – you some of them you qualify for, some of them a little easier. They all have different, different uh, – philosophies different uh for us let me tell you about the KB, kbf the kbf is an event and, and chad hoover will tell you that it's not so much about i'm going to get the very best anglers in the nation i'm going to get anglers who want to be at an event and yep. they're, yeah they're going to crown a national champion the hobie series is one where you're siphoning in into the top 50 and those guys are going to fish off for a championship bass a uh, little bit it's tougher to qualify in that than people think yeah, um, I, I happened to get lucky in Colorado and because I, I didn't qualify in Nebraska. I thought I want to get to that first one. So I'd go to Colorado and, and you know, we had almost 150 guys at that one. But again, you had to qualify, but they crowned it like a kind of like a, a bass champion, national, national champion. Someday mm -hmm. it may be in the one, but I, I see so many different avenues. It's kind of like the bass world right now. You can pick and choose where you want to go. And there's a there's a level of competition for your ability. And the, and the cool thing is you can go test your abilities with guys that are pretty good. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I think, Marty, this year is going to be the year of the local tour, tour uh, mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. trails. I think this mm -hmm. is going to be a very special year for them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I plan on, you know, when I get back home, I plan on supporting the NVKBA 
as much as I can and fish as many as I can with them. I mean, yeah. it's just my yeah. local trail. I mean, yeah. that's the backbone. That's the <laughs> grassroots of kayak fishing. You know, it, it is those trails and those yeah. t- t- tours. I mean, again, I, who knows what's going to happen this year, man. I mean, with COVID mm-hmm. and everything else and things could shut down again. And I hope not, man. I hope we can move forward and, and you know, get, get rid of this crap. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it, like I said, man, um, it, it, there's something for everybody to do. You know, there's a tournament every weekend, you know, yeah. uh, for, for yeah. people to do, man. And just got to pick what you want to do and, and just to go out there and enjoy it. The other thing is don't get caught up in what kind of kayak you got to have. or what No, nah, man, you don't need to all the you know, about the equipment. All that you can fish a six foot Pelican with a fishing pole and a box of lures and do just as well as a guy with a 14, 17 foot Hobie. Hey, straight you know? up, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, all these guys with all the electronics and stuff. I had That's zero electronics on, on my boat this weekend, man. None. Yeah. Zero. I just did it by cool. feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? There you go. Well, I was going to tell you too. Um, I went to Florida, you know, over, I'd never been to Florida. My wife says, Hey, Marty, we're going on vacation. We're taking the grandkids and her kids to Florida. And I went, Really? I said, Can I go fishing? No, you're not fishing. I go, What? <laughs> we're going to Florida. It's like I'm going to Florida. Like, yeah. like Bass Central down there. <laughs> and and where we were going to stay, I'm going, I find out that that's Bass Central. And mm. I'm like, Diane, I got to fish, please. She goes, Nope, sorry. So I go down there and I, 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 I kind of texted uh, or uh, messaged, uh, Conrad Benetti, and I go, hey Conrad, what do you know about this area? He goes, oh my gosh, you're in like where there's a lot of big bass. I go, he goes, I'll I'll get a few friends up and see. What there's. So he mentioned Sherman Bishop, and and so I contact Sherman. Sherman, goes, yep, I'll pick you up. So he picks me up. He's his house at the time. He just moved, you know, but his house yep. at the time is right on a lake, and so we launch right there at the lake, and I'm gonna go catch my. I want to catch a Florida bass, and he said there's some big ones there. And okay, so I go out there and sure, I got hooked up like in five minutes in the dark. And I'm like, oh, this is unreal. And and you know, and I got I got to use one of his kayaks, and but I I caught nine Florida bass that morning. Yeah, man. Got, yeah, three. I had three hours to fish. He got me back in time, so I didn't spoil the trip for everybody. And I uh, got to beautiful we thing. To, like, yeah, we went to Legoland, and and I had a blast. You know, that's awesome, but, man. Uh, I can't thank Sherman enough. But man, I got a taste of Florida. And I'm like, Diane, we could live here. Nah, nah, nah. You know, I'd have, you know, she, maybe someday, you know, she said, but, but we can move. But right now we're, we're, we're rooted here in Nebraska where her family is, you know, oh, and my yeah. family too. So, yeah. Um, but I'll tell you, man, I, I got a taste of that air and it reminded me kind of California, you know, in a way it probably gets more humid than California. I'll bet, but uh, oh yeah it gets nasty in the summertime but i mean like yeah. that's why i'm here man i mean that's why i'm you know that's why i'm yeah. not in virginia fighting 14 yeah. inches of snow i mean yeah. there's a yeah. reason why i decided to come here for the month man uh, yeah. just it's a special place man i sure. love it so yeah. one more a couple more things here number one is remember this time last year we were doing like a fitness school thing and yeah we were all trying to work out and you know i'm i'm i still i really believe that we as kayak fishermen it's a physical sport still even if you have a motor Yep. It's still a physical sport. It's oh, it absolutely is. It takes – people don't realize how much it takes to you do it. And it's an eight, seven, eight-hour grind. And, and you know, it's yep. like kind of I – I used to run marathons, and it reminds me of at the beginning of the marathon, you feel pretty fresh. And by that eighth hour, you're like, oh, my gosh, I got to get through this. Yep. And then, then you got to yep. stay mentally in it because if you don't, you fall apart. And – That and is just, so true. So – um you know, when I first got down here in Florida, I, I wasn't able to take my uh, my autopilot with me, having mm-hmm. a plug issue. So I had to take my Hobie. Now, I haven't been on a Hobie in like six months. Mm-hmm. So we're on Felsmere, and it's a three-mile pedal down. Me and Eric Collins went. It's a three-mile pedal down the canal to get into the mm-hmm. main lake. Mm-hmm. And then we started fishing around the main lake and stuff. And by the time it's all said and done, we're, we're basically 11.2 miles on my watch is what we wound up pedaling. Wow. I was spent like yeah. Eric yeah. L- left me high and dry. I mean, yeah. he was gone. You have to get in ho- what I called Hobie shape. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're not in Hobie shape, I mean, you're not going to be able to survive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, I was grasping at the end, man. It was, yeah. it's physically exhausting. I mean, there's yeah. so much, you know, that, um, it takes, I mean, it's a great, it's great yeah. exercise, man. I mean, yeah. it's legit. You could burn a thousand calories out there a day. Right. So, so back to the winter. So right now, where I'm at, it's ice. I mean, I'm not going to paddle. Guy, you know, nope. we go ice fishing and stuff. 
But what I do is work out in the winter on, and I use these workout programs. But I'm going to tell you right now that you've got to be in some kind of shape to do this. And so that's why I'm recommending that you do check with your doctor, though. But get a workout that works for you. Like right now, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. I'm doing the beach body 645 workouts. Oh yep. my gosh, they're great. Flexibility, mobility. I just love it. So if you guys are interested in something like that, let me know, message me, and I'll help you with something like that. Get you started. But I do that all winter, and I'm I'll be 63 this season. And for Good me for you, to man. keep up with you young guys, I've got to be in shape. Yep. You know? Yep. And uh I and have my is, shakeology every morning, man. Yep, uh, same here. Yep. Every day. Shake. Every day. Yep. Yep. And uh, so shake always is a great thing, but we have to take care of ourselves to be able to do it because we have seen guys and gals that health wise has deteriorated them to where they couldn't, they weren't able to do it anymore. And, it, yep. and I don't want to have that happen to more friends. So get your, I know I have a lot of friends here that have, that have shed a few pounds just so they can, you know, be a little bit better shape for it because the last thing we want is somebody to go down with an injury that they could have prevented if they would have done something to, to, to get themselves ready. So build that foundation of working out, you know, and it takes a few minutes a day. Um, I'm on a 45 minute, uh, six days a week workouts. You can go as little as 15, 10, whatever. Yep. But you got to do something. I, I like that goal last year where we tried to lose. And I got myself down to pretty good and um, trying again this year because, you know, in, in my profession as an educator, it's easy to stress eat and forget about, you know, what you're supposed to do. And in the 12 to 15 hour days, you know, in the building and activities, it can take a toll on you. And uh, so I recommend that you, uh, that guys do at least, something at, for themselves. At least stretch out, be yeah, flexible, yeah, you know, yeah, flexible, flexibility, yeah. flexibility yeah. is the um, yeah. fountain of youth, you know. You you may not be Christine Fisher out walking around in your kayak, but you can still get out there and be efficient with your kayak. You know, yep. she's, just, she's, just, she's like a, a cat, a little cat on it out there walking around like it's nothing. I'm like, how do you do that? Well, I mean, people people don't realize the amount of strength it takes to be in, in the kayak fish. I mean, you, you've got to load and unload your, your kayak. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got batteries. Yeah. You've got all these different yeah. things that you're, you're hauling back and forth. And I mean, you don't believe me? Just get a bad back every once in a while and see yeah. what happens oh, yeah. and, and oh, yeah. how much your, your body goes through when you're actually kayak fishing. You know, yep. it, it, you'll feel it. Yep. So here, one more thing here if we go is uh, we're doing something unique here in Nebraska. And I told you a little bit about it, but I, I'm hoping some people see this near the end of this video. We're, we're, I want to be done, hopefully, with this 60-minute show, normally what we do, you know, so half hour to, to an hour. But I, I got this in the mail today, a whole box of these, if you can see it. You know what that is? Carbonite catch board, man. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we were able to purchase 24 of them. Great. And we have leashes from RoboHawk. Yep. And I want to uh, talk about them here is that, you know, you can save your phone and save your board with one of these little nice leashes. Because I had a girl today to, at school, she says, you ever lost your phone in the water? I said, nope, I got a little leash on it. Said, really? <laughs> so anyway, we got these for the kids for our youth league and for any adult that doesn't have one. So what we're doing this year, Greg, this is this is going to be cool. You know, I have a little fishing club here in, in, in town with the kids. Yep. And it's growing. Uh, and we're bringing in other towns this year as well. I'm doing some presentations at their schools to, to get them encouraged to do this. We are having a Monday night league. Get this though. It's youth and adult. It's kind of a hybrid league. If, and, and if you're an adult, you can fish with a kiddo 19 or under. If you're a kiddo, you can fish with another kiddo or you can fish with another adult and you get points each week. Like if, if you and I were partners and you I was a kiddo and you were the adult, we would both get our 100 points and then we could fish with somebody different the next week and we get points of that. We get those points. That's so fun. Cool, man. Yeah. And so the youth, the, the top youth and the top adult end of the season will get a metal catch board, a brand new metal nice. catch board engraved, nice. with, engraved with our stuff on it. That's All right. Great, so man. get this, though. The, it's free. It's absolutely free. Weekly prizes. We got Bass Pros. Yak Gear is sending me uh, some some really cool stuff, and I'll be putting that out there. Um, Catchboards worked with me on this and gave me a heck of a deal. RoboHawk as well. So they've all kind of helped us out. And so if there's anybody great, else that helps out, let us know. But these kids are going to show up there and fish, and they're going to learn so much. But, guys, if we're going to grow the sport, 
that's our resource coming up. You gotta get them on the water to experience yeah. it first, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've got they've got to take that first that yeah. first step, man. That's great, dude. That's and great. These guys here just love it. And you know, um, I just seen a lot of young lives change because of that. Yeah, We're taking them out. Um, yep. As you all know, I've got a couple kids that lost both parents in the last three years to cancer. Mm. And, uh, you know, they live with another, they were adopted by another family here, but one of them's carving lures. He's helping me with the reels. He's kind of like the school leader and getting guys going, recruiting guys to, to get with us, you know, and do this. Um, by the way, yesterday was our reel. We, we, we oiled reels and took them apart, put them together in, in 25 minutes in a homeroom, you know, with me. Uh, in, a, in a shop area, and then our next session is going to be Nico, the Nico <laughs> building. You know? you know a little bit about that, don't you? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So we have these, and uh, I, I'm really excited for that. It's a six week league in May and June, which it, it's not too cold, not too hot. No, it's perfect. Yeah, and then they can decide if they want to fish some more stuff. We also have a Wednesday night fun night where it's free, where the adults can come in and ki- people can kayak. And then we have an in, in, end of the season tournament for the youth anglers on a Sunday afternoon. And we're going to have big prizes for that. Bass pros. I'm hoping they're, I, I haven't heard back about those prizes yet, but they, in the past years, they've helped us quite a bit. So what do you think? Is that a good, good idea? Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, yeah. again, well, you know, like, like I said, I mean, it's not just about the fishing, man. It's not, yeah. you know I mean? Yeah. It's not. And, and, and they will grow to absolutely remember that for the rest of their life, man. Uh, you yeah. know, when you ask them the question on your show, Hey man, yeah. how'd you get into kayak fishing? They used to say, yeah. there's a guy named Marty Hughes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, it's awesome, yeah. man. Congratulations on yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks. You know, to, and, it, and it's not just me. I have a team of people that, that are behind the scenes that help me so much in this area. And, I, and I'll be sure to mention them when we get, get into it. But, uh, Anyway, uh, James Strawbert said that's a great format. Good job. Um, Sean Dwyer, again. Um, Sean Dwyer said, I only paddle or pedal when not in tournaments. It gives me much more stamina for sure. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, James Leggett, he dropped significant weight this year. Improved his fishing so much more than he thought he would. And he, mm. he really came on at the end last year. You know, and so we're weight, not weight, we're just health conscious about it. And it helps us realize that because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sitting in a rocking chair when I'm 70 or 80 going, I agree. I wish I'd have done that, you know, and and that's how I feel, man. I mean, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, because I mean, look, you know, you're not guaranteed tomorrow, man. You know, you're not. No. And, and like you said, I'm going to live life to my absolute fullest, you know, and if I die on the water, I die on the water. (laughs) You know what I mean? I get it. You know, so yeah. if If I live to be 85, I'm going to bring the juice. So you better watch out. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, we don't, we don't give bonus points for age, man. You better bring right. the juice. That's right. There's no age groups in that's running. Right. There's age groups, but that's not right. in this. In not here, man. There's no age groups. It's that's like, right. You, know you don't get to, that's to say, you don't yeah. get to uh, play from the, the red tees here, man. That's right. That's <laughs> you right. You know what I mean? That's right. So, so boy, I really, we got a couple minutes here. Are there any shout outs you want to give anybody, you know, sponsorships? I, I don't know, whatever you have, Greg. Yeah, I, I certainly do, man. I mean, obviously I want to thank my, my wife uh, for letting me to do what I do. I mean, she's, mm-hmm. she's my cornerstone, my bread and butter. Yeah. I mean, she's just yeah. like, every, you know, every part of me. So obviously I can't be doing with what I'm doing if it wasn't for her and her support mm-hmm. and everything else. But I, I do want to give shout outs for the, for the KFL sponsors. We've got uh, three mm-hmm. bells, Lauren Fury. If you're looking for a kayak and you really want some good people, go, go see Lauren at uh, three bells. And also uh rip and energy drink just came on board with the KFL as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're really excited about that. So if you, you know, need, need that little energy on the water, like we talked about, man, uh, a little pep in your step, go get some rip and energy. And uh, we're, you know, we're happy to have that. Also, um, mainstream um, bait and tackle out of uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, mm. is coming on board as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, again, look them up. Great dudes up there, man. So, yeah, cool. I mean, other than that, also, I, I, I'm not an official rods, you know, rod guy. I mean, mm. I, I kind of use a lot of the different rods, but mm. the rod that uh, I really, really fell in love with uh, helped me out this weekend, and I'm gonna give them a shout out. Is is Dobbins? Dobbins mm. really had a quality rod for me this weekend, and it worked mm. to a charm. Uh, Blake cool. Knight and, and Clifton Allen kind of turned me on to the Dobbins mm-hmm. Professional XL, mm-hmm. and buddy, it's the best cheddar rate rod I've ever had in my life. And so, um, yeah, I want to give him a shout out because good equipment matters, man. You know what I mean? You, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely. equipment. You can't afford equipment failure. I'm yeah. sorry, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, I it's it's 
the best rod I've ever I've ever nice. fished with. So anyway, good to I hear. Give a shout out to that. Yep. Sean Dwyer said Roland Martin's going to do it. You know, I met Roland Martin, and and, and the guy's a beast. He's a oh, beast. He's un he's unbelievable. And like you talked about, he does a lot of fitness videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What he so, does, you mm -hmm. know the. I was a PE teacher for 33 years and that's what I preached was being fit, you know, and here yeah. I am. I, I'm like, I, I got to stay with this. And I, I got out of shape for a while because it's some knee surgeries, but I feel like, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to do this, you, you've got it, you've got to have some fitness involved with it. And, 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 yep. you know, it, it's just, and it just makes it so much more fun, you know, at the end yep. of the day. So yep. man, Greg, I'm going to have you on again here, uh, maybe later in the year, and we can talk about, Love to. you know, how you update the KBBT, the KFL, and what you're doing. Sure. Um, also, I know you have a great show, the motor. It's called Motorsports. I can't remember. Motion, Motion, Motion. Sports I Network. Keep, I keep thinking yeah. Motorsports because you yeah. mentioned Motorsports well, in it. Well, I did. I did broadcast yeah. from the Daytona International Speedway. Okay, that's so, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was pretty cool. Motion Sports. Motion it's Sports on YouTube. Network. It's on YouTube. Yeah, so download the app. Um, it's on your app. It's called Motion Sports Network. You can go to YouTube, subscribe and like there. And then we're on Facebook and Roku okay. and Amazon. If you got Roku or Amazon okay. Fire, uh, we have a uh, thing there as well. So okay. Yeah. And then also, when I go to Maryland, I will be taking a tour here after I retire. You and I are going to go fishing. We're going to go Chesapeake Bay fishing. I'm going to take you out striper fishing, man. There we go. There we on go. On our kayaks. That's yep. that's one of my epic trips I want to take. Yep. All right. We're going to go. All right. Hey. Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, man. It was great to have you here. Uh, we're 100%. getting lots of uh, comments here. Um, and uh, I, I just can't wait for it all to start. I know it's already started for you, but us guys in Nebraska are still, we're, <laughs> we're, I, this is just for show, but we're wearing stocking caps here yet. I hear you, you know? man. I hear you, and, man. Uh, well, listen, it, you know. Well, again, guys, uh, thank you guys for, for, for joining, uh, Marty and I, and thank you again, Marty, for having me on your show, man. And, uh, really do yeah. appreciate it, buddy, man. Really. Right. Do. And share, share this if you can, that'd be great. People can see it then. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Thank All right, you. Buddy. See ya. See ya. See ya. Let's see here.